forward. Back in the 1940s, I asked myself the question, do we have authority that we don't know about, that we haven't discovered, that we're not using? I had had little glimpses of spiritual authority once in a while. Like others, I had stumbled upon it and had exercised it without knowing what I was doing. I wondered, is the Spirit of God trying to show me something? So I began to study along this line, think along this line, feed along this line, and I began to see more and more light. An article in the Pentecostal Evangel prompted my study on the words, power, and authority. Then I came across a wonderful pamphlet entitled, The Authority of the Believer, by John A. Macmillan, a missionary to China who later edited the Alliance Weekly. His pamphlet was reissued several years ago and is available from Christian Publications, Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. As a result of my studies, I concluded that we as a church have authority on the earth that we've never yet realized. Authority that we're not using. A few of us have barely gotten to the edge of that authority. But before Jesus comes again, there's going to be a whole company of believers who will rise up with the authority that is theirs. They will know what is theirs, and they will do the work that God intended they should do. Chapter 1. The Prayers of Paul. The authority of the believer is unveiled more fully in the book of Ephesians than any other epistle written to the churches. Because this book is based on Ephesians, let me encourage you to read the first three chapters over and over again for several days. You will notice there are spirit-anointed prayers at the end of the first and third chapters. However, Paul didn't pray these prayers only for the church at Ephesus. These prayers apply to us today just as much as they did to the believers at Ephesus, because they were given by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1 16-20 Verse 16, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to use with who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. 20, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Ephesians 3 14-19. Verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 15, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. 16, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, 18, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, and length, and depth, and height. 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. The turning point in my life came when I prayed these prayers for myself more than a thousand times. I started by reading them aloud, beginning with the first chapter. I personalized the prayers by saying,